Good morning. Good morning. So uh, I, it's really, really unfair that I had to go after Tammy because I'm, I'm a wreck right now. Um, so there's, there's really just one thought I want to share with you, but um, I'll just take a couple minutes to do it. Um, I bet there's someone in the room and you always, I have this thought, okay, but what should I do? So like, which one should I be? Well, g give, me, give me the plan, okay? So I want to talk to you just a minute about that, and I hope you'll be disappointed with what I have to say. Um, the, s several pretty smart people have encouraged us to understand who we are. Uh, it's important for you to know yourself before you can be the one. Um, the idea that is brought to us over the ages is if you don't understand yourself, you can't work effectively. You can't be who you were made to be. Uh, so I think the first step for each of us needs to be to continue to pursue an understanding of who we are, for me, who I am. This is me. Uh, you may have taken a test of different kinds before. This is, this is one I, I had the opportunity to take a couple months ago. If you're not familiar, uh, it's called Emergenetics, and it, it tells you about your thinking preferences. So the four colors up here represent four different preferences as thinking. I, I heard that laugh. Someone who knows me says, yeah, that's him. <laughs> Notice up here, I'm 50% conceptual, and I'm another 28% analytical. So you'll see on every one of my slides, I tried to bring this really big idea to you. So this is me. This isn't all of me, but this is who I am. And if I understand that I'm this way, and I understand that other people are not, don't have that preference in thinking, and that there are others who need concrete details, the big picture is fine, but where's the detail? If I don't understand that, that about me, when I try to communicate with others without providing detail, I think probably will not get what I'm saying. Since we have done this in our organization, I've had the privilege of being corrected, not corrected, but, but helped by someone to say, you're talking yellow and they need green. <laughs> Help them understand what you're saying. Andrew was just saying, for example, blah, blah, blah. He didn't mean you should go do that thing he just said. So for me, I continue to try to understand who I am so that my work and the way I live can flow out of that in ways that make sense to others. So here's, here's what I want to encourage you with. Be you. If I run out of time, that, that's all I've got. But be you. Uh, please don't try to be me. The world can only handle one of me. And I'm, it, it, don't try to be that person that you look up to. You can learn from others. The parts of what another person does is worthy of emulation. Don't attempt to copy anyone else. If you weren't made for something, don't aspire to be that thing. Um, th this is perhaps a more painful part. Please embrace the past. I'm not saying you should be proud of the things that you have done that you shouldn't have done. I'm not saying that you should be glad that you have experienced pain and wish to do it again, but if those things had not happened, you would be a different person than you are today. And who you are is not an accident. Your entire life has perfectly aligned to make you the person you are today. And you are perfectly equipped to do something that I cannot do and your neighbor cannot do. So what should I do? Maybe your question. And my answer is, I have no idea. <laughs> All I know is that the only thing you should not do is nothing. You were made for something. You were made for something perfect and great 
and astonishing if you stop and get a little yellow like me and think about the nature of human life and that one human being has the ability to exert influence on another. You get to do that every day. And pictures in the paper and papers on a wall and the praise of others is not worth very much. What is worthwhile is the impact you have on the lives of others. I get embarrassed when people say, thank you for this and that and the other because I know me and I'm not what you see here. I'm, I'm this teenager that's crazy and I have no idea why you're listening to what I'm saying right now. <laughs> The, a phrase that I think we should agree to eradicate from our vocabulary is just a teacher. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. You get to create ripples in the lives of young people. Let me try to prove it to you. When I was a language arts teacher, I tried to teach my students about the concept of cause and effect. And I would try to help them understand that with an example from my own life. I would say, you should attend to what you do every day. Yes, they would ask me what I meant most of the time and I would have to repeat myself. You should attend to what you do every day because one thing you do can change the course of someone's life. Let me try to show this to you. When I was in high school, there was a girl I had a crush on, and nothing happened. Uh, <laughs> but one day, we were in chapel, and after the song, we sat down, and she said, you have a really good voice. You should be in choir. And being the infatuated person I was, I immediately signed up for choir for the next year. And then I went to college, and because I had been in choir and had had a solo in choir, I said, I'm a singer. I will sign up to be in choir in college. And I continued that. And then one day, four years later, across the room, in the choir room, a young lady caught my eye and then sat on the bus next to me and eventually brought me home to her family in Alabama. And I would not be working in this state. Today I love Alabama. My 17 year old self absolutely was not considering a life in Alabama. <laughs> but because one person who is no longer in my life said one thing to me in passing, there were steps that happened that changed the course of my life. How much more can you, on Monday, say the thing that you've said 50 times already? How much more can you not react in a way that a student has been reacted to their whole life? And begin to make ripples that you will never see. There are, of course, many other influences on my life that I know of and that are invisible to me. So here's the thing. To be the one you don't need more than to be yourself because you have the opportunity to impact lives every day, every day of your life. Sometimes that becomes something more. Sometimes the life you impact is the life of a state school board member or a legislator or your superintendent or parents. Sometimes it's impact that is visible to other people. And sometimes the impact is the steady influence that you exert on students every day. Please remove just the teacher from your vocabulary. Every one of us that have spoken that are no longer in the classroom love to talk about still being a teacher. I've crossed to the dark side. I'm at the central <laughs> office now. <laughs> And when people ask me, how is that? 
I said, they lied to me. There are no kids over here. <laughs> we want to be teachers. We cherish the opportunities that you have. Here's the last thought. When you are tempted to be discouraged, when you are tempted to give up, do the thing that you know. Do the thing you were made to be. Because as a wise man once said, perhaps, just perhaps, you were made, you were made and you are perfect for such a time as this. Thank you.